Thanks. But basically, this shit just came out, and uh, thanks to Yo Yomil, I think. Is that who called this out? Yeah, Yomil. For dropping this out. This came out like an hour ago. And the title of it is The Taiwan Question and China's Reunification in the New Era. The People's Republic of China, the Taiwan Affairs Office of the State Council, and the State Council Information Office. It's not too long, I don't think. Nah, it's not too bad. Not too bad. So, I'm gonna just gonna link this below. I'm just gonna read like the preamble and the conclusion, and I'll, I'll look at the rest in the morning, but we can probably get the gist of it. And, you know, this is happening right before F2 Bridge. They got can kick to September. It was supposed to be this week, but of course, they can kicked it again, and then you see all this shit happen. You know, I believe the Congress is still on vacation or the Senate or whatever. I think they're on recess still. But anyways, crazy shit. So basically, resolving the Taiwan question and realizing China's complete reunification is a shared aspiration of all the sons and daughters of the Chinese nation. Okay, it is indispensable for the realization of Chinese rejuvenation. Okay, it's also a historic mission for the Communist Party, blah, 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 the CPC, the Chinese government, and the Chinese people have striven for decades to achieve this goal. Okay, so that's, that's obvious. So the 18th National Congress of the CPC in 2012 heralded a new era in building socialism with Chinese characteristics. Under the strong leadership of the CPC, Central Committee... With Xi Jinping at the core, the CPC and the Chinese government have adopted new and innovative measures in relation to Taiwan. They have continued to chart and course the cross-straits relations, safeguard peace and stability across the Taiwan Straits, and promote progress towards national reunification. However, in recent years, Taiwan authorities, led by Democratic Progressive Party, or the DPP, have redoubled their efforts to divide the country. Huh, sounds, sounds familiar and some external forces have tried to exploit Taiwan to contain China, prevent the Chinese nation from achieving reunification, and halt the process of national rejuvenation. So basically someone has been in there, you know, been a wedge preventing this shit from happening, it's so they say. The CPC has united the Chinese people and led them in fulfilling the first sanitary goal of building a moderately prosperous society in all respects as scheduled, and in embarking on a new journey towards the second centenary, I'm fucking retarded, I can't read, goal of building China into a modern socialist country. Okay. The Chinese nation has achieved a historic transformation from standing upright to becoming prosperous. Okay, so this is just, you know, some a bunch of bullshit, basically. They're not telling us anything. Um, it's just, go China. Let's go China. Chinese government has published two previous white papers on Taiwan. Uh, I remember this. There was one in 1993, yep, and then 2000. Okay, I didn't know there was one in 2000. I should probably look at that one. But they provided a comprehensive and systematic elaboration of the basic principles and policies regarding the resolution. So this has been, again, a, another ongoing fucking problem you know, for quite some time. And part one, the title of it just says, Taiwan is part of China. Okay, no shit. This is indisputable fact. And the reason of the importance of this is it's like the center of the supply chain bullshit that's going on. It's a, it's a center of the narrative with you know, Taiwan versus Hong Kong war that goes around in the news. And it's also involved with, with the chip. And our fucking senator is there, or uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi is there. And uh, it, it, could, it could never be more relevant that this came out at this moment in time. So... Let's just go to the conclusion, just to see, because this looks like a bunch of history. They're they're like referring to 1949 and shit. Yeah, this is probably something you you could read and learn a lot. I'm, I just don't have time to read this entire fucking thing right now, but um, you probably learn a lot about the you know back history of China and where they're headed and what really the whole world's been going through for like 30 to 40 years. The shit's not new. These problems are not new. We're just at like the in in stages of it. Let's go to the conclusion there real quick. So over, over its 5,000 year history, China has created a splendid culture that is shown throughout the world. Okay, it's more go China shit and has made an enormous contribution to human society. After a century of suffering and hardship, the nation has overcome humiliation, 
<laughs> emerged from backwardness and embraced boundless development opportunities. Now it is striding towards the goal of national rejuvenation. No shit. That's what, you know, we've been waiting on. So step, you know, step up. But this is the paper we want to see. This is, you know, it solidifies what we've been thinking. And uh, embarking on a new journey and a new era, the CPC and the Chinese government will continue to rally compatriots on both sides of the Taiwan Straits and lead the efforts to answer the call of the times. Shoulder historic responsibilities, grasp our fate and our future and our hands. It's, you know, all unity. Let's hug and, and make up. Let's go China. That's what I'm saying. Like, the whole war bullshit narrative. I think I bet my tits on it that it would never happen. So I get to keep my tits for now. But they do say here that the journey ahead cannot be all smooth sailing. However, as long as we Chinese on both sides of the Taiwan Straits devote our ingenuity, ingenuity, holy fuck, and energy to the same goal, let there be no doubt we will tolerate no foreign interference in Taiwan. So, uh, let's go. We're basically traders now. Just kidding. We're traders, not traders. But yeah, the historic goal of re reuniting their motherland must be realized and will be realized. So, let's go China. So it looks to me like this is just a, uh, really some fluff. But this is what you want to see though. I mean, you know, and that's what I'm saying. On the news they're saying war, death, misery. But here they're like, we're going to hug and we're going to be friends. And then they give you some back history on China. Basically, you know, the back history and story of what's been going on with them and the rest of the world for, you know, 40, 50 years or longer. I mean, right here, I mean, they're telling you straight up to realize peaceful reunification, we must acknowledge that the mainland and Taiwan have their own distinct social systems. And ideologies, so maybe we gotta respect what their beliefs are, and how their systems are currently set up. You know, it's like no shit. <laughs> so I mean, if that's the case, and they're really just now realizing this common sense shit, you know, it's like it's like that's how retarded they are. Like we're supposed to be the retarded ones. You know, the differences in, in their social systems are neither an obstacle to reunification nor a justification. Uh, for whatever that word is, I don't even want to try to say right now. We firmly believe that our compatriots in Taiwan will develop a better understanding of the principle and that the two system solution to the Taiwan question will play its full role while compatriots on both sides work together towards peaceful reunification. Okay, so there's no war. You know, Nancy's there. And you, you see it with these smiles, man. I mean, they're fucking pricing this shit in. And what I was trying to say, let me just go to Weevil real quick. I'm going to show you this. Like, okay, we know the Fed's going to raise interest rates, right? And there is a Greek that normally doesn't mean shit, and it's the RHO. Normally, fuck the row. It doesn't mean anything. But now, you know, you're looking at the scale of these rate hikes that we're getting, and it, it fucking matters now. It, I think if the math is if you had a $4 contract and the rate goes up 1%, that you gain, uh, like, 0.25 on that contract. So whatever... The percent gain from four dollars to four twenty-five is you just you know that's the value that you get by default from the rate going up one percent. But if we go and we look at any of these S and P and it's all S and P related, right? We saw the filing. That's why we're specific to the S and P with this. And you look at the expiration, and you know you don't want to get these right because you, it's not the same setup. But if you go here, like. Look in December, man. Like 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. The lowest one's right fucking here. No, no, I'm sorry. It's right here at 350. It was up 0.71% today. You know, and these are, again, we're talking 129 days out. With the theta is currently at negative 0.0255. So you're losing... Two dollars and fifty si fifty-five cents per day. If the stock traded completely flat, which it didn't, this one was up not even a full percent, and you gained ten percent. So that's this thing; it's gonna fluctuate. Like you can't like look at the price, and if it's even if you're down, like 
I was down like 80% on Amazon. But, you know, I let it ride to earnings and the motherfucker gaffed in the money. You know, it is what it is. Maybe it was luck, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was because the smile, maybe it wasn't. You just, it's gotta, you got to keep trying it until it you know proves itself wrong. But, I mean, Coinbase is going to be a big one, dude. Like, that's going to be a big tester. Because if we look at Coinbase, and you'll notice, by the way, if, like, this isn't the case in other months. Like, if you go to September 9th, you know, it's it's still there, but it's higher up or, or lower in the chain, meaning closer to the money. So you're talking 2253, so 305. So, you know, between September and December, it moved down $45 because the rate isn't going to be priced in until, I believe, I, I don't, I'm not sure the exact date of the FOMC, but it's going to be around this one or the next one after that. That's why I'm thinking just go ahead and snag the October because, you know, October, what are we looking at here? 32, it's 330. So 330, it's, it's uh, a little bit higher. And I believe, like, you want to try to time it because I, I don't know if it's going to be one or two, but we need to look into that and see exactly how many rate hikes are left this year. And, um, you know, it's going to matter, especially when they actually come out with the number of what they're going to raise the rates to. Um, this next time for the meeting but um, yeah I mean January of next year it's still there but there's something about those December's man there's not a lot of strikes like comparatively speaking October and this is Microsoft so let's look at Coinbase real quick it's coin you know they're all a little bit different that's the thing and that's why I think it's really based around the earnings. Okay, why isn't this typing, you son of a bitch? No, coin. I heard about the Weeble glitch where people's line graphs were like switching to their uh, candles and shit. They were like switching back and forth. That's hilarious. So coins on SSR tomorrow, meaning short sale restriction. Which, it you know, despite what people think, it, it does matter. Like that you can't short on an uptrend. So if it gets going and gets momentum, it's gonna be hard to stop it. The IV though, dude. I mean, dude, the IV is so fucking high for this week. Oh my goodness. But if we go to the ninth, it's still high as shit, but it's it's much lower. And you're talking like the lowest IV is like at 170. And then you look at the 16th, and that's not the case at all. Like, it's not even close. I just think it's funny. It's a little bit. It's it's ten bucks. Ten bucks lower in the chain um, <laughs> later, which is which is weird, right? You expect it to be higher, but it's actually lower. That's what I'm saying. Like Coinbase is an anomaly because it's got the lowest IV at the deepest strike in the money, and the next expiration, it's actually lower than that at 160. So, that makes no fucking sense to me. And I mean, so hold on a sec. So the price of this one is the bid is fifty, and then the bid here, what is the one seventy? It's forty. Okay, that makes sense. It's a little bit closer, but it lost fifty percent today. And you, I know these motherfuckers. They're just slow. They've been slowly scaling in on these motherfuckers because it doesn't matter. Like when you have the capital, they do. I mean, you can just keep averaging down. That's why you don't blow your load all at once. That's the worst thing you can do. You fuck yourself because if you blow your load and the stock goes down fifteen percent, you have to sell. Like you basically, or you're fucked. You know what I mean? It'll take everything you have. But uh, yeah, man. I mean, this shit's definitely abnormal. But we know why. Because everything that's been going on is abnormal. I mean, you just go through and look at all of them, man. I mean, AMD, they have, I'm sorry, I typed too fast. I think that's A. Let me go to AMD. There we go. And some of these have these uh, non standard options. These are non standard right here, these AMD ones. It's 17200s. These still have smiles though. 
But, I mean, look at this. Look at these bits, though, dude. Like, right here at 200. We're talking, like, it, you know, these bid asks are fucking wide as shit. For AMD. Like, for stocks like this. So I'm thinking, like, look, like look at the importance of these dates right here. I'm wondering if this falls around those, those rate hikes. These these dates here, the six, the sixteenth, twentieth, nineteenth. It's right around that time. But anyways, we I would not trade those. I don't I don't believe, I believe they're more expensive. But yeah, you look at uh, December with these. Let's see where is it at? Forty six, thirteen, forty right here. One forty. Lost thirty percent of its IV today. I just, you know, this is just weird, very, very abnormal shit. I mean, that's where all the volume is going, man. I mean, there's more volume on it. I've seen, if you look at the volume on a daily basis, you'll notice there's more out of the money than in the money. It's, it's, which is weird for these stocks. It's normally they're, they're stacked here. Like, you normally see it here, but not on the open interest side, but with volume. You see it, like, stacked on, right, right around the money. Like, I think, let's go to AMC and see if AMC shows shows it like that how it normally is yeah okay so you see how AMC's right here like it's kinda all stacked right here at the money that's what you normally see with these AMD Microsoft and, and shit like that but you know we're talking like these motherfuckers are making it obvious that they're pricing shit in further out I mean they just uh, I mean they're adding strikes left and right and that's what I'm saying. They're about to add more too. In September, there's going to be a whole new thing of leaps, and there it's going to be so important to look at those. It's going to tell us everything. But basically, what you're seeing is them pricing in the breakout market because we know we all we all seen the short interest. Everything's shorted to piss. They're going to have to account for that. And the SFT something. I mean, that capital charge amendment is taking forever. That's going to roll all the way into November, I think. But uh, we'll see, man. I don't know. But yeah, that Taiwan shit, man. It's uh, it's it's kind of good to hear, or not hear, but see. I don't know if the if the news will. I don't know how they're gonna spin it or what. But we you just read it. It's just a bunch of kumbaya bullshit and with some history in it. Most uh, more than likely, we read some of it. We skimmed through it. But you know, they're not talking about killing each other or blowing each other up with missiles. So <laughs> you know, and Nancy's there. So. It's all, that's what I'm saying, the news is, it's all a charade, man, it's all bullshit. It, 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 but it can tell you what you need to know. You just have to look at it the right way. These are up 22% somehow. Yeah, dude, this is like just go long. That's all you gotta do. And if someone, if you're, if anyone asks questions, I'm sorry, I got everything muted because I'm retarded. I, there's a very slight chance that I could just be talking to myself this whole time, which would, you know, I've done that before too. But luckily, I did not forget to record. So as long as my mic's working, everything should be good. AMC's got a low, <laughs> dude. What the? They're already stacking OI like already this far out in January of 2024 I mean if, if anything they may be selling these motherfuckers right now if this OI goes up tomorrow from where it is right now you know that this converted over and uh, <laughs> likely selling some calls but you never know that the, the high V is the lowest right there so you don't you don't sell low IV you sell high IV and it would make a lot more sense to sell puts right here So yeah, I mean, I don't know. Everything's backwards. Like you've seen it, inflows, outflow, and outflows, inflow, because they're shorting everything. Well, I'm gonna go to bed now. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm gonna go do shit. Oh wait, yeah, I'm recording. That's cool. 